So now on to um, actually creating our first module. Um, I think this one we're just going to stick with something real simple here. Uh, not get too overly complicated with it just yet. Um, so in that back into that where we created our table. Um, let's go ahead and create a, a Lua file here. Uh, you're welcome to just name it functions or whatever you want. Um, I'm going to name it my function just because I already have a module named functions. Um, so in this one, we're going to actually get away from a module to an extent. I mean, it. it any Lua file is a module to some extent, um, but we're just going to go ahead and just make some global functions here that we'll have access to later. Um, and there are times where that's kind of handy because, like I said, I've already got a, a functions module that does basically exactly that. Um, there is no table, it doesn't return anything. Um, oh, I'm actually just return a nil there. I think that's a stale over from when I was first setting it up thinking it was going to be a module. Um, but at any rate, it, nothing's set to that, so that's not actually anything. Um, and this way, we can just, we'll go ahead and create that timer that's going to constantly write. Um, I just, you know, take from a, you know, the idea I'm thinking here is we'll just have it take two addresses and then constantly write it honestly will be pretty similar to one of my set functions um, and we may even go ahead and say by default it'll be a float since that's more common but then maybe even set it up to where we can give it a third parameter that'll be the value type um, of course you can always just do it to a you know, do it kind of like I've done here where you're setting it, you know, set float or set, you know, D word or integer, just depending upon naming conventions you prefer. Um, and we'll put that inside a timer and then, or maybe even make two separate functions, one to set and then one to actually make use of the timer, you know, a constant set kind of thing. Um, just for a, you know a scenario where that would be what you want to do so here let's go ahead and start with our set function um, so we'll just go ahead and do that and let's go ahead and call it set float and then all we really want is uh, two separate addresses so it'll be in my mind I'm thinking it's better to do the first the address we're gonna read from since you know that's the address we're gonna start with working with and then it'll be the address we write to. Um, uh, for simplicity, let's just go address one and address two. Um, if you want to be more explicit, you can, you know, do something like that. Well, for some reason, I did it backwards there. Um, anyway, you know, whatever order you want to do it in, that's, that's what you want to do. Um, Okay, so I'm changing that now just because otherwise I will confuse myself at some point. So here, what we'll want to do, and then um, cheat engines, uh, the read and write functions, you can actually, you know, pass it. I've never actually tried nil, but an invalid address, and it just won't do anything. Um, so you don't really have to do a lot of error handling here. We can literally just set it up to where it's just um, going to do, you know, write float with read float, more or less. Anyway, um, so we're going to write to our write address here, and then 
for our value that we're going to write, we're then just going to read a float. And here it'll just be that read address. <coughs> um, and then one thing with all the write, uh, obviously the read functions return, you know, the value, but the write actually does return a status value. So if we wanted to, you know, check that, we could, um, and then maybe throw it there and say, you know, the, the write didn't happen or something. Um, that's up to you. I uh, generally don't really worry about that. Not with something like this. You can even see in my functions, I just, I'm not doing that. I, I don't see, at most, I just check to see if the values are nil and return. Um, and we can even do something like that. So with that, you can see we're saying if, you know, not address or not read, you know, not write address or not read address. And thus it's more or less checking for nil. Um, uh, technically it gets converted to a boolean when you use the not, but, but at any rate, uh, so if you actually did pass false, uh, for some reason, um, it would think that that was, you know, these would evaluate to true and then, you know, it would return. But if you actually passed, uh, true to it, it would get evaluated a false and thus it wouldn't return. And, you know, these might throw an error, but the idea here is we'll, you know, I, it, you know, really only going to be passing either maybe a nil object, a string or a number based on, you know, what I found and how I'm writing. And I know in most cases it'll probably be a, a string with a, maybe a hooked um, base address or a static address with the um, different notations. Um, we'll probably just use the cheat entry tutorial to test this out and play with it. Or at least that's my plan, just to, you know, everybody's got that. Um, and the values are easy to find, so we're not really worrying about tracking something down or any of that. But, so that's our, our set float function. Um, we can even just go ahead and, so that way we can handle both floats or integers. We can go ahead and set it up that way and then change both of these to the necessary functions. And then from there, that's when we can go ahead and add our, our timer function. Um, and then this, like I said, you can even use a thread. Uh, I'm actually thinking now we'll go ahead and do both. That way you can kind of pick and choose which one you want to use. In this situation, I would actually just say a timer is, you know, going to work fine. There's really no reason to use a thread. Um, but at the same time, if you're trying to fire a, a timer too fast, um, you can kind of run into issues there, and that's where a thread could be faster, I mean better, because it's, if it's a real simple loop and not doing a lot, it can fire really, really quickly and just be really constant. And then maybe you're only calling sleep for, you know, one millisecond or something, but um, I'm thinking we'll actually go ahead and set it up to use the uh, Cheat Engine default, the settings for the uh, freeze timer. So that way it'll run based on what those settings are. And then um, we're going to go ahead and actually go over like how I would find that, uh, the, those settings. Just because I do know they're here somewhere. Um, so I might have done that too quick. Um, so in the cheat engine directory there's this cheat engine lua.txt file and that's got basically everything you could ask for um, as far as lua. Uh, well. Not all Lua, but all the stuff Cheat Engine adds that is um, accessible or exposed to Lua. Um, so here, Control F, and then um, I can freeze uh, timer one word. There we go. No, that actually returns the object. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, we can go ahead and just access the timer and then um, get its interval and then use that same interval. I, I'm pretty sure there's another way to do that, but since this is what came up first, actually, that's, 
Yeah, that's all I'm finding there. Okay. So, and then again with the idea of just poking around sometimes, I'll go ahead and make sure this is going to work the way I'm thinking it should work. Um, we'll just go ahead and print out the interval. Yeah. And so, um, and then we can even check type on that to make sure it's a number and not a string. Um, really not a good, you know, not needed, but but still, you know, it's just good to know what it is. Um, and that O print function could have helped. I, but again, I'm not, I disabled my plugin. Um, <coughs> so for a uh, timer setup, um, they're not really too complicated. Uh, again, if you don't know anything about a timer, um, this is a good way to figure it out. Um, so here we can see we've got a couple different options for creating a timer. Um, thinking, yeah, this is one of the newer ones. This tends to be the way I I use it. Um, owner, I swear it was a long while ago. A number of up, you know updates have since fixed it to where it doesn't really seem to be a problem. But I still prefer to explicitly set the owner to the main form. Um, obviously, if you're making a trainer, you could set it to your trainer form, and this way, when it, it'll that timer will exist within that form. So if that form closes, it'll just get rid of the timer as well. And obviously, like in this kind of scenario, that's, you know, probably something we want to do. It was, uh, I started doing it, and it may have been something goofy I was doing at the time. Because uh, I do know I discussed it with some people, and it seemed like not everybody was having that issue, but it would throw an access violation if I closed the main forum um, and didn't get rid of the timer properly. Um, it would actually kind of freeze cheat engine, and then I'd get a access violation um, again that may have been on all me because this was pretty early on and starting out but it got me in the habit of always making the main form the owner and I just I still like doing it that way but um, you don't have to <coughs> using this declaration seems or this way to create it seems to work fine for everybody else so uh, there's no reason not to use it other than being stubborn like me um, and so um, and there's a you know different ways of doing this um, we could make it a module and then have the timer inside that module and then each time you create an instance of the module you get that new timer since we're just creating some global functions here we'll actually make it to where when you call the function it creates a new timer every time um, and the idea being you won't keep running of the script over and over again um, but you will go ahead and set it up to where you can enable the script that will call this function it will create a new timer in this way again you can call that function in different scripts um, yeah we'll, we'll have to return the timer object so you can kill the timer later that is where object orientation can kind of get a little more handy. Um, in this case, like I said, we'll just solve that with a simple return the actual timer object uh, when this function ends. And then in the uh, memory record, you would need to do like global, you know, global timer equals whatever we're going to name this function. Uh, and then set it down into uh, the disable section to actually stop the timer or even just yeah, kill it and set it to nil to clear it out uh, just because the, the garbage collector is pretty good um, I don't I actually want to say Lua's default garbage collector isn't so great but you know Darkbyte has set up the garbage collector and uh, 
to work pretty well so it, I haven't really had a lot of issues with that but um, there are more complicated objects that you absolutely do need to uh, call like terminate or end um, it depends on the actual object but usually you would find that information in here um, if I remember correctly thinking it was destroy but it doesn't look like it is maybe the component class yeah, um, previous so now this doesn't have a destroy um, so yeah we don't even have to worry about that I'm guessing just setting it to nil will will destroy it but at any rate we'd want to set enable to false so when you disable it it, it disables the timer and it quits running um, so let's go ahead and I'll have to think of a name real quick okay so I think in this case we'll just call it um, set value timer or maybe create set value timer would probably be the better wording um, and I sometimes you just literally got to sit there and scratch your head and really go over it what you you know what's going to be the better naming scenario because um, actually taking time to properly name things can help you a lot down the road just because if we would have just called it set value timer you know we might think that that's the timer itself and not what's going to create it um, We'll just go ahead and get started. So, create set value timer. And then here, um, and we can go ahead and make, you know, a variety of optional parameters. Um, we'll go with a more simple approach because ultimately we could use this and then try and retype and see you know if we can figure out what the parameters are and just expect things in kind of a certain order but no certain things can be changed you know moved around in case they you know don't want to use an optional one um, but to keep it simple we're just going to go ahead and say most of them are going to be required and then and then whatever it's going to be required in a specific order no matter what um, so here we're just we're going to be needing these two values anyway or these two parameters either way so we'll go ahead and say that and then we're just going to ask for a value type and this one will always have instead of you know you could have an interval uh, option but like I said we're just going to use that global interval for the freeze timer um, so that way it would just be in their settings is what they'd set and if that works for normal freezing then it'll work in this case um, so value type and then here if you're not familiar with it um, so there is a uh, that one's empty anymore uh, there is this defines dot Lua and it has a lot of these variables that get used so in this case we're gonna make it so you can pass these you know variable types um, so like VT single would be your float VT D word would be your uh, four byte or integer um, and we'll just check against those um, another option would actually be to maybe make this parameter the right function um, if we weren't really using these kind of things um, and we were just coding it exactly like this down inside here you could then check if it, you know if your right function was nil then set it to uh, you know say right float or right integer whatever you want your default to be and then use that variable as the function um, that is one of those handy things with the way some of these scripting languages and Lua for one works because you can pass a, a function and then we can use that function within the function that's being called um, we're going to stick with more simple and just use the set float and set integer 
Um, and again, you could keep going with setting it up for a lot of different types if you feel like you need to. Um, but pretty much every game I've ever dealt with, it's always either integer or float and not much else. Um, admittedly, I think it was the uh, um, Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain. I think it is a small integer or a, a two-byte value. But, but again, we're just going to keep simple here. Um, so let's go ahead and reuse this real quick just because we do want to say that we don't want to do anything if neither one of these are passed because um, we need both of them for this to work uh, and again there you could actually throw an error and tell yourself you're, you're passing something blank um, for me I just you know I'd rather just exit out of this and not do anything um, yeah Maybe throwing an error is better on this one, just so that way when you call it in a memory function it, it, or a memory record, you'll know that something's gone wrong. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Right um, address or and read address. Again, we'll go ahead and give it that stack index of 2, um, like we covered in the previous video. Um, so that way you'll get the error and you'll know right away that you didn't pass it a value that we want, or we, you know, that we're requiring here. Um, and then here we can go ahead and say, since we're just going to be using the two different ones, um, actually let's go ahead and set it up so that way if we start adding more to it. Um, so value type, and this is another thing you can do. We can uh, set other variables or set this variable based on something. So we can say value type equals value type or, and this way if it's ever to, you know nil, then it'll, you know, this will equate to false, and then it'll come to the next thing where we can set our default basically, and we'll go ahead and use that BT single, and so the default will be a float. Um, and then this way, if later on you need to add more to it, you want to, you know, use the, you know, the word uh, or two byte value, um, you could keep adding to the if statements here. Um, so if value type is equal to VT single, then. And then um, with Lua if statements, of course, there is the else that'll just kind of cover everything. Um, and that's where you could actually just do a default here instead of setting this. Um, but I tend to like to be a little more explicit. So this way... Oh, else if. I have a brain fart, sorry. Okay, so else if um, value type is equal to BTD word, then. And so in these, this is where we're just going to go ahead and use that, you know, like here, set float. And then use the write address. And then the read address basically do the same thing down here except we're going to make it in right you know set integer and then that way we'll be handling it right um, and then again you could either just use else and then maybe make it to where the default is set float um, in this kind of scenario, me personally, I'd rather throw an error here and just say, you know, something has terribly gone wrong because <laughs> even our default didn't get used. So uh, really, this would never trigger um, because it'd just be, well, no, I guess it could if you pass some goopy value. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that then. Um, value type. Here we can 
actually go ahead and add to our error message. And that way we can see what it was actually set to. Um, again, back with that stack index of two. And then that way we'll know we pass something that it, you know doesn't equal any of the value types that we've set up for. Um, and how you want to do that is just kind of up to you. Uh, like I said, some of this can just be personal preference. Um, and there is nothing wrong with having a default that you just kind of fall back to if something doesn't go right. But to me, it would be if I do something wrong and it's meant to be a D word, um, I'd rather... Yeah, less for D word and integer. And actually, in this case, you could use either one just because we're not really doing anything with the value. So even if it reads a float as a D word because we're just instantly reading and writing, um, it would actually still work. Uh, you could, you know, call set integer with two float values and it, it would work. The only time it wouldn't would be if it's a two byte value or the value type is smaller as far as how it's stored because then you might override something especially if say they're right next to each other you know max health and uh, current health it, you might override max health with your current health when you're setting that and those set your max health to zero and have some real goopy problems um, oh we didn't actually even create the timer <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here um, so yeah, this would be our function that we'll end up messing inside our timer, or the, the part that we set inside our timer. Um, not that, though, no reason to do that. Um, this would actually be another scenario where you could just set your function here, so this way you don't, inside the timer, you're not going through this these if statements as often it just quickly fires um, but we'll just go ahead and stick with the way it is now so local timer equals create timer and then um, like I said I actually do still like doing um, and this is one I, I don't remember exactly where but cheat engine adds some constants I know it goes back to 8 point, or Cheat Engine 6.8.3, where you've got these. Um, an easy way to make sure it'll work for even older versions is just to go ahead and main form equals main form or get main form. So you could do that kind of thing just to make sure this will work no matter what version of Cheat Engine it's on. Uh, I generally don't do that anymore. I used to when it first got added, but at this point it's, you know, if you're not at least on 6, I just, you know, a lot of stuff may not exist in there anymore. So it's, you know, I'm going to have other problems to begin with, so I'm probably going to be the first thing I'm going to tell you is to update your version of Cheat Engine if you have a problem with my table. So let's go ahead and set timer.interval equals, uh, what was that? Get freeze timer. Freeze timer dot interval and then timer dot on. I don't even remember. On timer equals and then this is going to be our function. Um, and this is another way you can actually set functions. Um, you don't have to actually and and even here we could technically do it like this. Timer dot on timer. And either one would work fine. Um, 
so e either one it just kind of depends how you want to do it normally I'm more into using this for modules if it's something like this timer I will tend to use this um, and then you don't really need that but it will pass this timer object to it uh, actually does cover that in here so that way you can you know kill the timer at a certain point you know maybe you want it to only fire once so that way it does whatever task one time and then you would you know I swear it is destroy I don't know why it's not showing up here it actually really does make me super curious Yeah, there it is. That's where destroy comes from. So yeah, when we want to destroy the timer, we would call destroy, and it's that it gets inherited from uh, component class inherits from object, and then when that when the timer actually inherits um, from the component class, it then gets that that function added, um, and that is one of those things that yeah, sometimes you just gotta kind of backtrace within here to find stuff um, so then back to what we were doing here uh, let's close that to find it. I'm clicking on it um, so here is where we just want to go ahead and slap in our our stuff there and so then every time this timer fires it's just going to check the value type to determine what we're writing and then it's just going to call this set float function or set integer and then this write float you know first technically it'll kind of read float to get the value from ideally you know max health and then call write float to actually write the value to this address which would be current health ideally or, or anything really mana or whatever the case may be um, you could even set it up to where you only allow strings for the addresses and then check read address um, you could even call it read address or value and check it and if it's a number use that as the value um, you could do a lot of different things we're going to stick with this for now and then here at the end this is where we want to make sure we return the timer so that way you can save it local or globally you'll have to do with the way the the scripts work in uh, the uh, um, address list uh, for Lua I swear at one point you could use local variables and have it in enable and disable section but it doesn't seem to work that way anymore um, so we'll have to return the timer so you can create a global timer sorry in the uh, address or in the memory record and then destroy that timer in the disable section so that way you can actually shut it off and won't be writing to it constantly anymore okay just to speed things along here um, I've gone ahead and opened the 64-bit cheat engine tutorial um, and we're gonna actually just kind of cheat this just to move along here um, since a lot of these values seem to be close enough we're just gonna say pretend like this is max health um, even though it's not really in this context but I, I've just done the tutorial enough to know that these will kind of say at least while we're in step two uh, when you go past that it, it might start deallocating things but but for here we've got our, our health value um, and so we can actually test that set that to 100 if we do hit me again it'll update and so it's actually gone up I'm still decreasing it here but this way it's decreasing from 100 instead of that 95 and we could even go ahead and set that to 100 because it won't change and just pretend like that's our max health. Um, 
so we're used to my plugins. Uh, so if we come here, tools, uh, auto assemble, templates, cheat, uh, cheat, cheat table framework, and then assign to current cheat table, current memory, uh, whatever that last option is. Um, yeah, assign to current cheat table. You can tell I don't do this this way a lot. Um, so here, to use Lua, there's a couple different things we want to do. Um, you can mix and match as far as where you start using the uh, these tags to tell that you we're, we're going to be using Lua. Um, but just because of the way Cheat Engine runs this stuff, uh, if you just go ahead and declare it once up here in the uh, main section, it will be used for both the enable and disabled section. So this way, it, the whole thing is Lua. And Cheat Engine does parse this to where the um, enable and disable tags won't mess you up at all. Uh, so one thing real common you, you want to use inside a, a memory record like this is uh, if syntax check return end, basically. Um, and what that is is Cheat Engine gives you a variable that's just syntax check, uh, all one word, all lowercase. Um, did I say it? it, it Syntax check is a variable that gets passed to uh, these memory records. So that way you can know whether it's just a point where you're closing it. Because otherwise it will try and run it to test it. And so in that case it would launch the timer. And we don't, we don't want it to launch the timer. We only want to do it when we enable the script. this way it'll whether enabling or does it you know it technically you know, I think it always wants to run the enable section it may actually try and run both I'm not real sure on that you'd have to throw on some prints and test it but either way it'll hit it right here and stop um, and there might be a scenario where you want to and I know even I've done that where if you're declaring a function in here sometimes it's good to go ahead and leave that because it doesn't matter if the function gets assemble or you know or uh, set up in Lua this way you can actually check to make sure your syntax is right in Lua um, but then when you actually call the function you would want to do it after this uh, it just kind of depends upon what you're doing here we're not going to really worry about that too much um, so here what we want to do is actually go ahead and require our module um, and it'll probably be in the next video that I go over actually being able to require it as a table file. What am I doing? So we're going to go and require my functions. And then, and like I said, we don't want to use that file extension here. It'll, you know, because to, um, for require it, it has to be a Lua file. It, it'll throw an error with anything else. It may actually try and execute stuff, but I don't think it even looks for anything but a Lua file unless you set up the path to look for something goofy. Um, so here we're just going to want to call this create set value timer. And then, like I said, we're going to want to create yeah, global. We're going to want to create this global timer. Um, so this one would be kind of based on what you're actually doing in this memory record. So we're going to call this set health timer. And then, again, in a real game, you would actually want to track these down to a static value. Um, we're not going to worry about that here, just because that's not really the point of this tutorial. Um, it's more about just Lua. And then actually with Cheat Engine, um, either you can use a number, and then of course in Lua you need to do 0x to tell it it's a hex number. But um, in these kind of situations, Cheat Engine will actually take strings, and by default it'll view it as hex 
Um, so we can just kind of do either or and it'll work fine. And then here, this is actually a, an integer. So we want to tell it VTD word or value type D word. And then this will set up our timer and start it running. And then when we disable, we want to destroy. So, so now we're gonna, you know, we'll be, you know, checking the syntax, you know, making sure this isn't a syntax check to, before we run everything, and then if it's not, then we're gonna require our module here, um, our functions module, and then actually set up the timer, and it, you know, and this function actually creates it and starts it running, and will you know, instantly start writing to it. We'll see it update here. Uh, it doesn't update here just because it won't. And some games do that where it won't update a display value until something tries to modify it again. But in the address list, we'll be able to see it at least in the beginning as long as we have these. But if you're using static values, you could easily nest these under there. So, yeah, so we close that, save our table just for, yeah, it's fine to save it as that. Um, so if we call this, now we can see we've already set health, and then we can sit here and just keep clicking this, and it'll never go down. Um, this won't pass a step because it needs to be 100 um, after it tries to modify the value. Or no, yeah, right there, it's telling us. So we'd have to set it to 1,000. Um, you know what, just to cover it, let's go ahead and change this function then. Um, so for that, what we would need to do to re-import this when we're done, um, we would actually have to unload the package, so to speak. So what it has is this is where it stores all the, the loaded packages. Um, and essentially, it's just a table of the modules that have been loaded. Um, so if we just set this my function to nil, then it will re-require it. So that's where we can go ahead and say, okay, we want these to all be strings or a value. Uh, obviously, the right, oh yeah, it would be that first one. Uh, anyway. So since our read value is a string, it'll it'll take that just fine. Or yeah, no, write value would always need to be the address, but or write address. Um, so let's say we want to set it up so we can say a thousand, um, and basically either pass it. And we'll do this so we can kind of show both of them still working. So we want to be able to either pass it an address or a value and have it freeze it to that. In fact, to get it past the step, we'll need to go up a little way just to make sure it's over a thousand. Um, we'll run that. Okay. So back to our module here. So the way we can handle this is go ahead and say. the same. Yeah, let's just do this completely differently then. So yeah, we're going to go over a, another way to do all of this. Um, so local right Say, actually, since 
we're already we've got our default set so we actually don't even need to check for um, float really so if value type is uh, D word then we just want to go ahead and set our uh, write function to write integer and then same thing with our read function we want to set it to read integer that way now here down here in our timer we can shorten that code up and make it run make it run a little faster and just do something real similar like we've got here with one minor exception so we use our write function our read function but we want to go ahead and check one thing here let's press o we want to check the type on this read address. So say if read address um, and type will always return a string. And it will just be the name of the type. So if read address is number, then we're going to do one thing. And then if it's not a number, we're going to assume it's an address. So here, we would just want to get rid of this read function since we don't actually need to read the value. It's a hard-coded value. And then here, uh, this would be one scenario where I would actually change this name. Um, Kind of steering you astray here. Um, trying not to make this too confusing, but I absolutely am. Um, so we're going to rename that so that way we explicitly know that it can be either or when we look at this. Um, so that means we're going to want to do one more thing that's a little different. Local read address. So here we can actually do it a little differently. We can say if uh, this variable is a number, then it's our value. And just be a little more explicit so we know what's going on exactly. And then if it's not a value, then it's our read address. down here then all we really got to do is say check to make sure value is some uh, we're not gonna be passing boolean in the idea here so it'll just be a, either a number which would equate to true or it's not set value and thus you know we assume that the uh, read address is, is set because that that is our else statement here um, And then we could even get even further with that and use like get address on this so that way we could check for nil and that kind of thing even more but um, I'm trying not to get too overly complicated here so change that one okay let's go ahead and recap here and Make sure we didn't do or I didn't do something goofy. Um, so we check both of our parameters here. Um, if either one is nil, then we'll throw an error saying that they can't be nil. Um, then we set our value type to either whatever value type is set to or default it to VT single. Then we go ahead and create a local write function and read function and set our defaults on those. Since we're going to go with VT single here, we want to set that to write float and read float. 
then from there we actually check our value type and if it is D word since we're only covering that one for now um, we want to set those functions the read and write functions correctly for a D word then from there we create our local variables read address and value check our read address or value parameter if it's a number then we assume it's you know we're saying that has to be a value and then if it's not a value we're assuming here that it's a string and thus it'll be our address and then we create our time or set the interval and then in here we just check to see if value exists if value does then we go ahead and write using the value Ooh, I didn't change those that one there we go then we go ahead and check value if value exists and we're going to write using the right function and we're writing to the right address using value and then if value doesn't exist the idea is that it's going to be a read address so we're going to kind of do just like we're doing up here um, and the level of complexity you want to add is always up to you if that first bit was fine and you don't want anything more than that because this is getting even I'm looking at this thinking this might be a bit much but I'm just trying to cover everything um, even though this is just a simple function just to kind of go over what we can do here partly just because I do want it to pass this actual check um, so that way we can pass that step of the tutorial. So anyway, if we go ahead and freeze that, now it's setting it to 5,000. If we hit hit me, oh, it must actually check for 1,000 exactly. Oh, that's fun. Okay, let's set that to 1,000. See if that works. I think it actually does. I think the check constantly fires. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, okay. So there we go, now we're freezing it to a thousand and we can pass step two. Um, not really important in this case, uh, but either one of those first steps would have worked. In pretty much any game you're going to have a max health, but say you know max health never changes it, you know, you, there is no leveling up or any of that. You might want to use just a set value so you don't even have to look for max health. Um, just kind of all depends on what you want to do. And then we can see here if we go ahead and cancel oh yeah I'd have to change it here so if we go ahead and cancel that and say something wrote to it then it's no longer writing and that way we know we have actually destroyed the timer correctly but enable it again and we're back to freezing it um, so that's kind of a way to do it um, like I said we go ahead and double check and make sure it'll work in both scenarios And there we go, it sets it to 100 and probably freezes it. Okay, so that was kind of, hopefully this isn't too crazy long. It feels like it already is. Um, but so that's kind of our first function here, um, or module. Um, nothing too complicated, but you can kind of get the idea, you know, where we can kind of continue with this. Um, not sure what we're going to cover. Yeah, actually, I do. I want to cover that uh, package loader stuff. Table file searcher. So, yeah, we'll. I'll go over this in another video here shortly. Probably not tonight, but um, tomorrow at any rate, I'm hoping. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of it for this one. Um, go ahead and open this back up in case you need to copy more I'm not sure it's right um, and I'm not going to include this one on a snippet because I want you to write it yourself because uh, that's just kind of you know it's the best way to learn I know it's going to take you probably longer than it took me to write it but it, you know that was that's how you learn uh, just write code and write code and write more code until it's kind of hammered into you um, so yeah, I think that's kind of it. On to the next one.